Okay, so this is a, a 10 step process to mapping out perfect content. Before you even start, make sure you understand what your topic is. You're gonna wanna do some keyword research. Select three to five primary keywords, six to 10 related keywords, or 30 or so. Just build a keyword list of all the potential keywords relating to that given topic. Analyze the top 10 results for your space, for your keyword. Make sure you understand what's there. Make sure you understand the types of media that are in that particular search vertical. Again, what types of media best answer the search query that you're trying to rank for. Next, make a list of questions that you can answer. I recommend 15 or 20. Because again, we're trying to create 975 words of content to even meet the average. I would recommend you shoot for 1,000. It's really not that tough to create a thousand words for a given topic. All you got to do is write 10 questions and then answer each of those questions with a hundred words. Makes it a lot easier. Build a list of relevant and proof terms. There's a tool called lsikeywords.com. It allows you to analyze the top 10 results and pull back the most commonly used words for those top 10 results in Google. It's a very valuable resource to kind of identify what words are most commonly, commonly used. Yes, sir? Latent semantic, LSI is, um, stands for latent semantic indexing. It's basically, it's basically a fancy term for frequency and usage of semantics. Um, it basically is just what words are used when and how often. So LSI is essentially a tool that gives you the ability to pull back data on what your search, you know, what, what the top 10 results are for that given search. Yes, sir? You can, yes. Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. Create images, create videos, uh, source other content or rich media, make a list of external sites you can link to, make a list of internal pages you can link to, and then start building your article. In terms of importance, semantics, internal links, and content length are the most important. There's a lot of other factors here, but we just covered essentially how to, how to address that. This is a, just a quick case study I did. A lot of you probably haven't seen this page, but it's a page that I did essentially about this event. It was more of a test and a challenge. I wanted to prove that everything I was talking about right now worked. So I created a 2,000 word article with 15 or 20 questions sprinkled throughout, four videos, 10 images, and within 24 hours, I ranked it just content, no linking, no anything. It immediately started ranking for workshop, SEO workshop, SEO training, uh, SEO training Orange County, and about a dozen other terms. So this stuff works. Build longer content, thousand words or more, questions as headlines, six images, <coughs> add some videos, build a long page of media, long page of content, and it works really well. Can you, can you say that long page of content? Sure. Which one? It's a great question. The question is, how does Google know if it's an original image? They actually have image recognition software. They can tell if an image has <laughs> ever been found on the internet before. They have, one of our guys can demo it for you in the back if you're really interested, but basically you can search by image. I can upload an image to Google and, and, and tell, and ask Google to give me its best guess on the image. You upload a picture of an elephant, it's gonna say this is an elephant pretty remarkable. It'll also tell you where it found that image first. So it'll actually give you a listing of where that image was found first. So if you have an image that you want to use, you might put it on the web somewhere and then ask and then take the URL of that image, the you know whatever website.com slash image name dot jpg and paste that into Google and see what comes back. Search by image, they'll tell you if it's on the web or not. A quick way to create unique images, if you have, for example, a, a big robust e-commerce store and you need to create hundreds of unique images but you don't want to use your manufacturer's image, 
Uh, one thing you can do is flip the image horizontally and add a tint to it or resize it. And that will actually bypass the unique image filter. So there's just a quick trick right there. 